Hi, my name is Mike Boone and I am the director of Adaptive Sports Iowa. Thanks to the generous support of Variety, the Children's Charity of Iowa, we are able to bring you this Adaptive Track and Field instructional series. Adaptive Sports Iowa is proud to, to help athletes all around the state of Iowa compete in their junior high and high school teams. Our goal is that these videos will help coaches and athletes understand adaptive track and field and become confident in their equipment. If you would like more information, please visit our website, AdaptiveSportsIowa.org. And thank you for your time. So as far as where to put our hands, we try to think of the, of, of the rim as a clock, 12 o'clock high, 6 o'clock here. Most people will say that at 1 o'clock, go ahead and put your hand there, is where you'd like to have your hand strike. And then as we come forward, maintain contact through about 7 o'clock. And from 1 to 7, then the arm is up and coming back to strike again at one. And that's probably what you will hear most coaches say. In reality, anywhere between 12 and two, what you don't want to do is hit behind. If you're hitting behind 12 o'clock, that's a breaking action. But anywhere between 12 and two, you have to take into consideration the flexibility of your athlete, perhaps his range of motion. He may have shoulder issues. He may have impingement due to who knows what, injury, um, paralysis, it could be anything. And so you got to let the athlete kind of find that range for himself. So it, it's not an absolute, but anywhere between 12 and 2 o'clock, obviously the more he can bring this arm through and around, and then the better the flexibility up through here on the recovery, and then that ability to strike back down, that's going to be optimal. So depending on your athlete and how much control over their abdominal muscles they have, a kid who has a higher injury level may not have the ability to work his abdomen and he may not have the control over that. If the athlete can, can use his, his abdominal muscles, as those hands come through, a tendency is to raise up and hit the chair again. When you raise up, that's when you're going to get that front wheel bounce. And you want to try to keep that wheel obviously on the ground. Contact is everything. The way to do that is it comes through the shoulder. There's going to be a little bit of up and down. You can't, you can't help that. But what you don't want is completely sitting up and coming down again. You want to try to stay down as low as you can. Generally, for athletes, if their head is up, the body's going to be up. And so keeping that head down, they don't, you can see the lane lines from here. You don't need to look up and see where you're going. There's nobody in front of you. And so as much as they can stay down on the track, especially in the drive phase at the, drive phase at the beginning of the, of the race, I think, that, I think that is probably the most important element for them. Set. Drive, 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 drive. Now one thing, if you notice, Jordan is short stroking. He's going from about one, he's going from about one o'clock to about four o'clock, and he's just straight up and down versus following through, and that'll be a thing he'll have to work on as the season progresses. Set. Drive through, drive through, drive through, drive through. There you go. See how his arms. <laughs> and just as a runner, just as a runner in those first few steps is taking a shorter, quicker step as his, his head is down, as he's coming out of the blocks, he's taking a shorter, quicker step until he gets up and then he hits the rhythm. And, and it's the same with the wheelchair athlete, nothing's different there. So if he's got a shorter, hard stroke to, through the acceleration, and then you want to find that rhythm all the way through. Now get to one to seven. <laughs> 